uh, yeah. Today we are going to see about the progressions of Linux call miners and strategies to detect them. So my name is Rajesh Kumar Narajan. I am working as a senior security researcher at Microsoft. I am having more than 11 years of experience in this domain. And I am a Linux and Windows malware analyst, reverse engineer, and I also have experiences in penetration testing. So I currently work for MDA Linux. So let's go into the today's agenda. So there is going to be three sections in this presentation. Let's dive into the first uh, section. So introduction of the Linux con minus. So first, we'll see like uh, why I have chosen this topic. Because Linux con minus have been uh, dominating uh, in the Linux threat landscape over ransomware and web shells. And I have also seen uh, uh, interesting cases like the Panchen operation, which has been uh, specifically targeting education sector for uh, cryptocurrency coin mining. And I also seen like Python packages have been uh, included with Linux coin miners uh, to spread the uh, infection. And there is also cases like infamous log4j vulnerability, which has been exploited to run coin miners on the Linux servers. So why uh, I'm focusing more on the Linux coin miners are because Linux servers are very powerful. They will be having a, uh, they are used to host critical applications. So they are coming with a good amount of CPUs and RAMs, which are a good point for the attackers to run the cryptocurrency coin miners. So let's see the evolutions of the uh, coin miners. So beginning uh, for cryptocurrency coin mining, so attackers were actually focusing on the Bitcoin mining, which is very slow and very resources saving. And so they started moving to Monero, which is actually providing them more profit. And uh, that is the reason. And after that, they started uh, slowing using GPUs to mine cryptocurrencies, because GPUs are very powerful than the traditional CPUs. And there have been special des specially designed AS ASICs to run specific hashing algorithms, which is used in the coin miner space. And why the uh, attackers started uh, following Linux services? Again, like Linux is very sec uh, secure and stable and like open source. And so it has been like widely adopted in many enterprise corporate environments in, on their on-premises as well as their cloud instances. So it becomes a lucrative target for the attackers to mine coin uh, cryptocurrencies there. So now uh, I've like used MDA telemetries for uh, over the last 90 days to study about the trends of the coin miners affecting the enterprise customers. And I observed like two thirds of the reductions are reported on the uh, US customers base. And few other reductions are also been observed on Japan, Germany, Canada, Thailand, and India. So. Uh, when I was going through uh, to understand like what are the organizations uh, targeted by the attacker, and I realized telecommunications, internet service providers, publishing are some of the top targeted organizations by the attackers to mine the uh, coin miners. Similarly, CentOS and Red Hat based families are like highly targeted to mine the coin miners, followed by the Ubuntu and Debian based families. So file types have like based on the uh, signatures trigger, yellow file types, tars, shell scripts or like uh, commonly related with the coin miners. And these are the file names used by the attackers, uh, which are correlated with the signatures, which detector on the coin miners. And these are the top tens. And as you can see, low rotate and uh, BG minus, EG minus are like very common. Team 8 is also used for reverse shell by some of the attackers. So let's deep dive into the coin uh, cryptocurrency attacks. So I have like analyzed like multiple Linux cryptocurrency miners to understand the common behaviors or pattern amongst the Linux coin miners. So based on that, I observed like some of the uh, techniques are very common. And uh, so uh, unlike Windows and Mac, like Linux are usually used in the servers that, than in the desktop environment. And most of these servers won't be having GUI access. So it will be uh, the traditional way which is followed in Windows and Mac might not be followed here to getting access into the Linux machine. Uh, so they actually use the uh, SSH brute force to get into the system, or they exploit the public-facing uh, applications like Redis servers, Oracle WebLogix, or Apache-based applications. And I also observed, like, after they exploit the machines, they actually use shell scripts, which performs reconnaissance activities. And also, they defeat uh, competing miners so that they get enough resources to run their miners smoothly. And they also avoid detections by uh, uh, like so stopping certain security agents. 
so they can uh, do their mining without any interruptions. And the other pattern is XM rig payloads. So XM rig is very common among the Linux cryptocurrency miners, which has been observed. Uh, and the other two techniques are the persistent based techniques. So after uh, getting into the system, the attackers want to get hold of the system for a longer time. So they add a, uh, their public keys to the authorized key files in the Linux, and they also create a cron jobs to uh, create a schedule to uh, keep mining in the compromised machines. So let's see, like, uh, along with the, uh, that, I also created an attack flow uh, to, uh, based on the multiple malware. So this is how typically an attackers First, they will either exploit the public-facing applications, or they will brute force into the SSH, or they will be uh, using the misconfigured Docker daemon APIs or unauthenticated Kubernetes nodes to get into the system. After getting into the system, they will be performing a remote command execution to either get a reverse shell back to the attacker or C2 server, or they will be like uh, using the ingress tools like duplicate curl to download their shell script into the machine. Once they have downloaded the shell script, they will be uh, trying to clear the IP table rules, configurations, and also they will try to uh, disable firewalls if any present. And they will also try to stop app armor, AC Linux policies. And they will also clear logs, bash histories, and everything. And after doing that, they will also uh, 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 defeat the competing miners they, based on the file parts and the process associated with the competing miners. So after doing all these things, they will be creating a persistence on the machine. First thing is by adding a cron job, and another thing is adding their public key. So after doing all these things, they will be downloading the miners into the victim machine or the server. And uh, these miners will be downloaded and get executed. And they will be applying uh, rootkit capabilities to hide the file and the process related activities of the miners. And sometimes uh, miners, uh, instead of uh, using rootkit capabilities, they will try to masquerade as a legitimate process running on the machine. Uh, to avoid the user uh, discoveries. Next, ap after doing all these mining related activities, they also perform discovery activities on the machine. And following the discovery activities, they will be trying to read the files present in the machine to look for any passwords, or they will also look for the public private keys present in the machine, and they will also look for credential tokens present in the machine. Uh, they will uh, try to gather as much as uh, credential information available in the machine. And they will also perform network scan uh, to find out other servers or uh, containers present in the same network. So using all this uh, credential information as well as the network scan information, they will be performing lateral movement, mostly via SSH uh, uh, to the other servers present in the Linux machine, and they will try to spread the infection. So this is a general steady attack flow of the multiple Linux coin miners. Now I just want to focus on one particular uh, Linux coin miner known as Kitmap. Uh, the reason why I want to uh, focus on this is this Kanban is actually using rootkit capabilities to avoid uh, de uh, defense to perform defense evasion. So I will be focusing more on the defense evasion. As I said before, like this uh, here, attacker actually exploit public-facing applications like Redis to get into the system. They perform uh, remote code execution, and this time they uh, does the execution via cron job. They will add a cron job, so that cron job will uh, trigger on a particular scheduled time. That cron job will in turn call duplicate, and it will download a script into the machine, which in turn will download a Trojan executable. This Trojan executable will be uh, performing persistence, adding HSS keys, and like disable uh, security tools and clearing locks, as I said before. And perform uh, after that, it will also create a reverse shell back to the attacker to get the uh, control of the machine. So this is where like Skidmap is slightly like unique from the other coin miners which I have observed. It actually performs uh, Linux distribution discovery. It actually tries to find out whether the malware is running in CentOS, Red Hat, or Ubuntu, or Debian. So based on the distribution, so if it founds it, whether it's a Ubuntu or Debian family, it will download the miner, uh, mostly in the old writable directory, as a hidden file, and it will try to execute it. But if it founds that it is running in a CentOS or Red Hat-based family, it will try to get the kernel version also associated with those CentOS or Red Hat. And based on those kernel version, it will download a dedicated uh, packages. And these packages actually contain a shell script as well as an embedded version. This shell script, again, uh, tries to perform disabling security and clear locks. And after doing that, it will extract the miner from the embedded binary, and it will execute the miner. So after executing the miner, it will try to hide the uh, uh, file and the process network related activities of the miner 
by using the kernel models. So these kernel models are directly inserted into the kernel memory, and it performs the uh, rootkit activities for the miner. Along with that, it also downloads malicious binaries into the system. These malicious binaries will, uh, with the help of uh, hijacking, execute CVE API. Uh, they will redirect the control of the uh, normal system commands like a root uh, or like a route or like netscat or other IP based commands, they will be redirected to this uh, malicious binary which will filter out the results. So let's slightly dive a little deeper into the uh, rootkit activities of the uh, skid map malware. So as I showed here, so the malware actually uses a symbol fn call sysms lookup name. Uh, which is, uh, this symbol is actually used to find the address of an another symbol in the kernel memory. So here, the attacker is trying to find the address of the member uh, symbol uh, filled there. So after, this filled there actually contains directory related information, files, and like metadata informations. So after that, like, uh, the malware also disables the right product to modify the kernel data structure. And after that, it replaces the address of the filter symbol with a fake filter symbol. So what happens now is, uh, whenever a uh, user uses uh, file system discovery-related commands, uh, the kernel uh, uh, will be handing over the control to the fake filter. The fake filter will in turn call the original filter, get all the results, filter out the uh, malicious file parts, and it'll give back the uh, filter out results back to the user. And it, uh, the attacker also restores the right protect permission. So uh, I, I told you before, like the malware also downloads malicious execute uh, binaries into the system, right? So as you can see here, the root com route command is trying to get executed in the machine. The hijacker here uh, actually hijacks the execute CVE syscall. So this syscall is usually used in Linux for executing any system commands. So by hijacking this system commands, they're redirecting the route to a binary called as RT, which is located at a different location. And this will perform the filtration of the all IOCs related to the uh, uh, miners, and it'll give the filter results back to the user. So the user will have no idea that the miner is running in their machine whenever they try to run any uh, top command or LS command or PS command in their Linux systems. Then there is a net uh, filter hooks. So uh, by attaching it into uh, this net filter hooks, the malware will also have a complete control over the network packets. They can able to analyze them, mo uh, modify them, drop the packets, or they can do whatever they want with the network packets. And uh, to perform all these root activities, malware will try to get the root privileges of the machine. Only with the root privileges, they can able to do all these uh, rootkit activities. So, uh, and the other thing which I observed is like finding the source code patterns among the Linux uh, coin miners. So, uh, how these coin miners have been created by the attackers. So, one thing which I observed is they are not creating these Linux coin miners from the scratch. They actually uh, take the open source binaries which are available in the GitHub. Uh, they fork that. And after that, they will be modifying it. They will be adding additional comp uh, capabilities to those binaries which I, uh, I talked before. And after modifying them, they will be uh, embedding their configurations, which includes their mining pool uh, addresses and other details, which are uh, related to the uh, crypto mining activities. And after that, they will be compiling it as a uh, uh, malicious binary, which will be infected, uh, spread across the victim uh, machines. So these are some of the common GitHub resources which I have found. Uh, Monero versions, XMBrick, CPU minus. Uh, which have been widely used by the attackers to generate the malicious payloads. Now I'm going into the, uh, the uh, final section of this uh, strategic approach, which is like how we can detect uh, this Linux coin miners and how we can protect against them. So similar to creating the attack flow, I have also like created this MITRE alignments. So for each and every malware, I created a MITRE attack matrix and I combine them to understand like what are the common uh, techniques which have been very prevalent among different miners. So the techniques which has been highlighted in the red are like very common among multiple cryptocurrency miners. And the other things are uh, not very much frequent, but they are also being present, uh, seen, observed in multiple coin miners. So now let's focus into the uh, how we can detect again the initial access. As I told before, like, uh, uh, Expert public-facing application is the one thing. 
So that is an easy behavioral pattern which I observed over this is if there is any, say for example, Oracle Web Logic is having some kind of a vulnerability. So if the Oracle Web Logic uh, will be usually written in Java. So if they want to download any file uh, using uh, Oracle Web internally, they will be using Java libraries to perform those operations. There is no uh, actual requirement for Java Oracle Web Logic to initiate duplicate or curl to download a file into the machine. So based on this uh, logic, we can actually create an alert to monitor for any uh, public-facing application exploitations. So we can follow this pattern of application pr uh, process, which is initiating a dash session, uh, dash SSL, which is a slightly mo a modified version of a sh uh, bash, uh, but it's uh, different. And it, uh, it is mostly invoked by this web application to execute any system commands. And if this pattern like executes any basic commands like OMI, ID, or like duplicate or call, then we can flag on this operation. And the next thing is, uh, as I told, like another one is like uh, attackers also using misconfigured Docker daemon APIs or like uh, unauthenticated capabilities. We can try to add authentication to them, verify them, or else in case of a, a detection and the production uh, perspective, uh, there are uh, uh, tools like Dagda which actually uh, verifies whether there is any uh, misconfiguration or unauthentication, or even we can create our own script to uh, protect against such things. And next is SSH brute force. So we have to detect the uh, SSH logs to uh, identify the multiple uh, failed authentications. Uh, we can create our own scheme, or we can use open source tools like fail to ban to perform the similar operation. Next is uh, detecting like command and scripting interpreter uh, shell cells. So as I told before, right, like uh, attackers, they don't uh, create con minus from this guys. They actually take the open source projects, they modify it, and uh, they run it. But if you consider a, a typical enterprise environment, there are less chances they will be uh, using those servers to mine cryptocurrencies. So even if a legitimate cryptocurrency operation running in an enterprise server is also a, a suspicious activity. So we can try directly like adding signatures for the legitimate mining binaries. If the attacker is using them and create a modified payload, there are chances that our signatures can detect those modified payloads also. That is the one thing. And when he, also another pattern could be uh, hidden files when executing from the old writable directories. And the next thing is uh, Python. Like, so I've seen like con minus actually using Python to perform in-memory execution. Usually, those in-memory execution actually contains base64 encoder contents. Uh, so if you find those kind of a patterns getting, uh, I'm not saying it could be a malicious activity, but it's a suspicious activity, which actually sometimes requires our attention. And the next thing is persistent. So again, like uh, attackers act, will uh, try to add their public key into the victim machine, so they, they can come back into the machine anytime they wanted. So that is the thing. So we can generate an alert on it. And again, a cron job. So like cron jobs are similar to Windows CAC scheduler. We can schedule a task in them. But uh, uh, like it is used for legitimate purpose. But there are certain patterns which actually requires our attention. One among them is like if the cron job is containing some URLs or IP address in that, or it is trying to download something from Pastebin or GitHub, or if it is having a base64 encoder content. And all these downloaded contents are, uh, are like malware is redirecting to bash to execute them. All these kind of patterns can be a suspicious one. We can be monitoring for them. And the next thing is, if the cron job is added with your, uh, curl or duplicate, again, that is also in another suspicious pattern, which you, you need to look for. And the next thing is, uh, as I told before, right? Like malware also tries to disable uh, or modify the security tools in the machines. So these are the four things, like SE Linux, which is used in CentOS or IDA-based distributions, AppAmmer for policies in Ubuntu, or Ubuntu, and firewalls and IP tables. If you found these are getting disabled or like getting cleared, then we can need to generate an alert and we need to look onto it. And another one is the uh, dynamic linker hijacking. So in order to hijack certain uh, uh, control flows, attackers will be setting this environment variable LD preload, and they will also be creating or modifying this LD dot SO dot preload file. So when this these are all like uh, present in Linux for a legitimate purpose but they are highly abused by the attackers. So when we found this kind of patterns are happening, it actually requires our attention. 
And the next thing is uh, next and uh, directory permission modification. So I have also seen like malwares when they download the scripts into their machine, they actually try to change the permissions of certain directories, cron file related directories. So using ch attribute, like they will try to make it immutable, so they don't want it uh, want the cron entries to be modified. So if you found such kind of a patterns, then uh, again it requires our attention. Again, like rootkit activities, as I told before. Uh, if you found any, uh, if you can able to correlate a, a file which has been downloaded from the internet and it is getting uh, inserted into the kernel memory, if you can able to correlate those uh, uh, activities, then we might need to look into that. That is the one thing. And next thing is, as I told, right, like as I show in one of the images, that attacker is actually disabling the right protect to modify the kernel data structure memories, right? So in order to do that, they will be uh, using. Uh, modifying the CRO register 16th bit, but it's a very low level kernel operation. So if you have a visibility into the low level kernel operation, and if you can able to detect that, then it will be good. And next thing is application layer protocol. So if you found out uh, connections to happening to any cryptocurrency mining pools like XMR related pools or like a FZ pools, then we need to uh, have to pools, like uh, then we need to uh, trigger an alert for them. Another thing is non-standard port. So I also observed like miners are actually communicating with the C2 service in non-standard ports other than 80s or 443s. So if you found out the non connection to non-standard port and a combination happening from your application which is a non-browsers and along with other suspicious patterns like repeated failed login attempts or unusual eye traffic, then we need to raise an uh, alert on that. Then the impact, as I told before, right, like cryptocurrency miners are very high in CP intensive as well as GP intensive. So if you found out uh, a process is actually using ICP and GP usage, then uh, we might need to inspect into that. So sometimes like uh, attackers in order to avoid the adductions, they will actually use packed executables. So static signatures might not work on them. In certain cases, it's better like if you found any suspicious process which is actually using iCPU, we can perform a memory scan on them using our static signatures. Or there are certain cases where the miners will execute in the machine and it will delete itself, but the process will be still running in the memory. During those cases also, this memory scanning will be coming, it will be helpful for us. And the next thing is service stop. So again, like if you found out like IP tables or like firewall based services are getting stopped, then uh, we might need to look into that whether it's an expected behavior or an unexpected behavior. So from this presentation, like I just want to summarize three key takeaways. The first uh, is like for, uh, for Linux coin miners, uh, for generally for the attackers to run a coin miners, Linux servers give me a lucrative target because of its wide adoption uh, of usage in enterprises as well as in the cloud environments. And the next uh, takeaway is the common techniques which I observed is uh, SSH brute force are exploiting the public facing application because usually in uh, Windows or Mac, like we'll be having an Outlook. So phishing is a one common technique where they come into the uh, enterprise. But in this case of Linux, there is no, typically there won't be much G GUI in most of the cases. So phishing won't be very effective in Linux landscape. So these are the common techniques used by the attackers to, for, generally for many malwares. For cryptocurrency also, this is a common pattern which I have observed. Again, shell scripts, they download a lot of shell scripts to perform a lot of operations in the machine. After that only, they will be downloading the ALF executable to perform the malicious operation in the machine. Again, persistent technologies uh, like cron jobs and adding SSH keys is also one of the other techniques which I have observed. And the last one is like specific to the coin miners. They actually uh, try to mine XM bricks uh, rather than the Bitcoin because of high profitability, more privacy feature, and it doesn't require a very complex system to run. And Bitcoin is a, a complex, algorithms are very complex, but XM bricks are not very complex, and it actually gives good profit for the attackers uh, to mine XM bricks. And the next thing is, uh, the third takeaway is about uh, how we can direct the, the, against this Linux coin miners. First is like understanding the techniques used by all these coin miners, and finding out a way how we can like uh, use those things to protect ourselves from this coin mass. So these are the references which I used for this presentation. Thank you. <laughs>